Well, good morning, and hello again, everyone at Isha Church School. I hope you're keeping safe and well. It's Darren here again, the priest, the rector at Christ Church in Esher, speaking to you again from the lovely church building. You may have noticed that I have something a little unusual uh, with me in church this morning. Can you see what it is? It's this bowl down here. Oh, got to be careful. It's this bowl of lovely, warm, soapy, sudsy water. Yeah. And I also have a lovely, fluffy, white towel. Lovely, fluffy, white towel. Now, why do I have those with me in church today? Let me tell you why. You see, next Sunday, as you probably know, next Sunday is Easter Sunday, Easter Day, and we're very much looking forward to celebrating Easter. But before we get to Easter, there's a day in the church calendar which is called Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday. Have you ever heard of it? It's a bit of an unusual word, isn't it? Maundy Thursday. What does it mean? Well, let me tell you. The word Maundy comes from a word in an ancient language called Latin. Latin. Have you ever heard of the language Latin? Yeah? Well, it was a language that was spoken all around Europe for many, many centuries. And it was a language which many people spoke in the Roman Empire at the time of Jesus. Anyway, this word Maundy, this unusual word, comes from a Latin word, mandatum, meaning commandment, commandment or rule, yeah? So Maundy Thursday is like commandment Thursday or rule Thursday because it's the day when Jesus gave us, gave us a new commandment. And that's what, that's what the bowl of water is to do with. Let me explain. You see, on the night, on the evening before Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday, he gathered his friends together for a last supper, for a meal together. But when his friends had come into the room for this meal, before they could even have anything to eat, Jesus did this most surprising and shocking thing. Jesus got a bowl of water, a bit like this one, and got a towel and said to his friends, to his disciples, I'm going to wash your dirty feet. Can you imagine that? They were really shocked because here was their their teacher, their teacher, their leader that they looked up to, Jesus, and he was going to wash their dirty, smelly feet. That was really quite shocking. I suppose it would be a bit like, imagine if, uh, imagine if Mrs. McLennan came in one day to school, Mrs. McLennan, the acting head teacher. She came into school and she said, everybody, take off your shoes and socks. Take off your shoes and socks because I'm going to wash your dirty, smelly feet. <laughs> I think everybody in the school would be very surprised, wouldn't they? And remember too that at the time of Jesus, people didn't have nice big boots and shoes and trainers. Oh goodness, no, they, well, a lot of people had nothing. They just walked around in their bare feet. Can you imagine? Or if you were lucky, maybe you had a pair of sandals. So you can imagine just how dirty and smelly the disciples' feet would have been at the end of the day when Jesus came to wash them, yeah? In fact, I'm going to do a little experiment now. I'm going to take off my shoes and socks and I'm going to walk around the church for a little bit and just see how dirty your feet get when you're not wearing anything when you're walking, okay? So I'm going to do that now and then I'll come back to you in a moment. So wait there, okay? So hello again, everyone. I'm back, I'm back from my walk. My little walk around the church building and uh, as you can see my feet my feet I'm afraid are rather dirty and that's just from a that's just from a little walk around the church so can you imagine just how how dirty the disciples Jesus friends feet were after a long day of walking in the dust and on the dirty roads and then coming to this dinner this supper this last supper and Jesus saying I'm going to wash your feet can you imagine just how dirty their feet were yeah let me just uh, let me just put my foot in the bowl. Oh, I'm afraid the bowl is uh, the bowl is a bit too small, or maybe my fit, foot's a bit too big. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave, we'll leave it there. But anyway, given that how dirty his disciples' feet would be, why did Jesus do this? Why did Jesus wash their feet? That's the question we need to think about. Well, I think Jesus did it for two reasons. I think firstly, Jesus did it to show his disciples, to show his friends, just how much he loved them. Yeah, just how much he loved them. He did it to show them that there was nothing, nothing that he wouldn't do for them. Yeah? 
And then secondly, I think Jesus did it to set an example, yeah, to set an example and to, and to show that if he is able to do this, then maybe by trusting in his love for us, we'd be able to do the same thing. Yeah, because that's how it works, isn't it? It's when someone does something beautiful and lovely for us that somehow then we're able very often to do something lovely and beautiful for other people. That's often how it works. We love best when we know ourselves that we are loved. Let me give you a rather kind of um, everyday example, maybe a slightly, ooh, my poor foot, maybe a slightly silly example. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Sometimes when I'm out driving in my car, I'm driving in my car and I'm in a side road and I need to pull into the main road, but there's a big long line of traffic, so I'm not able to get into the traffic. So it gets a bit frustrating. But then sometimes something amazing happens. One of the drivers coming along the main road sees me and flashes their lights and then lets me pull in ahead of them. A very lovely thing to do. And you know what often happens? What often happens is then, a bit further down the road, if I'm in the line and I see someone in the side road, I'm much more likely to let them in in front of me, yeah? It's like when something good was done for me, it's like I'm empowered to do something good for other people as well. Maybe that's a bit of a silly example, but you can think of, well, you can think of examples at school, I'm sure, yeah? Imagine for a moment that you're feeling sad one day. You're come to school and you're just feeling a little bit sad, but one of your pals comes and puts his arm around you or her arm around you and says some lovely comforting words to cheer you up, yeah? Well, I think if you experience that love, then you're much more likely to offer that love to the next person you see who's feeling sad, yeah? We love best when we know ourselves loved. So to go back to Maundy Thursday, this odd word, Maundy Thursday, or commandment or rule Thursday, that's the commandment that Jesus is giving us. Love one another as I have loved you. Trust so much in my love for you that you're able then to reach out and love others. That's the beautiful logic of this love commandment, this Maundy Thursday commandment. So that's really all I wanted to say to you today. Better try and uh, get both my feet, whoops, bit of a squeeze, both of my feet into this bowl and get them uh, cleaned up before I go home. But uh, before we finish, let's just have a prayer together. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you that Jesus loved his disciples so much that he washed their feet. Help us to trust in that love. Help us then to reach out in that love to others who need our help and our support and our love. Help us to love one another as he loves us. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you for watching again, and have a wonderful, happy Easter when it comes, and we'll talk again soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.